Welcome to Culture of Paint. On this episode, we're going to take a look at what's caught our eye over the last couple of weeks in the miniatures painting world. For the main topic, we're going to be discussing backdrops and their role in your painting projects and the apparent resurgence of them that we're seeing. And we'll close out the show, as usual, taking a look at what the hashtag paint cultists have been up to. Now, Culture of Paint is aimed at a mature audience, and we might discuss adult themes and use explicit language. Now, let's talk about paint. And we are back. So good evening, everyone. I'm Henry and joining me as usual are Matt, Andy and Rich. How are you, chaps? Great, good, mate. We're well, Andy, you're recovered. You your, just, your, your jet setting. I'm recovered and then I've been assaulted by real life straight away. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's all right. You'll be all right, mate. Rich has broken his leg again playing rugby, as usual. And uh, and Matt's just been unfucking other people's issues. So it's a pretty standard <laughs> week uh, with the cult, culture paint team. And loads of people in the chat. What's going on in there? Philip, Johnny, James. Oh, happy birthday, Philip. Yes, I can't think of a better way to spend your birthday evening than watching culture paint and building war hammies. Um, That's yeah. dreamy. Dream that is the dream, hey, right? Cup to here, good. A few teas, excellent. Nice one. Well, let's just crack straight into it. It's been a couple of weeks since the last one, one, one slightly longer than normal, but we'll be back next week with another one to get, get us back on track. Um, so, in those intervening weeks, what's been going around on the various social medias and whatnot that's caught so our eyes? First up is. Ooh. This is me. Believe it or not. I thought it was, a, it was a very Stilo pick. But yeah. <clears throat> There's been a lot of stuff in the last couple of weeks. I thought, oh, cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. A lot of it from people I've already shared on the potty. So I was looking for something a bit different. Uh, and I just saw this and thought, oh, that's really, really cool. Um, it's really different. Um, and yeah, it was a very spur of the moment. Really like that. Get it in the potty. <laughs> I like, I'm pretty sure that's from the Sisters of Battle floating. Yeah, throne, it is. Yeah. Which I thought was a really mm -hmm. clever way of giving it some mental shoulder words. And it's a great paint job. And I love that titan i really want to do one at one point so yeah that was my pick simple yeah, as man. that the auto sinister titan is such a i mean as a fan of titanicus the game and sort of the lore all around it like auto sinister is a very very cool very grim dark concept so um, is this a, are they psychic titans yeah so so they're so yeah basically it's a massive titan the driver is a psychic null so he's like immune to to witchy poos and yeah. the guns are the 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 ammunition as it were for the gun is psychers he ain't got any so, gun. <laughs> so you fire the gun that kills a psyker click click dump that psyker oh out the boot, wow keep, and keep going it's very grim uh, wow that, that is i didn't even know that you'd hope yeah. they don't have rapid fire yeah yeah, yeah. it's like it's it's, it's it's a great like it's a it's a proper warhammer 40k like right, you know, concept so way of doing it. it um there's a tiny bit of artwork in one of the black books we see like their sort of their crest um which is this brilliant like uh lion head and all the rest of it and i actually for me it's one of the, the few titanicus releases that i was i was really underwhelmed with um when we got the official version and i've seen a few people create some some really great looking sort of versions of their own a little bit more ornate and like this this looks like it's heading in a, a great direction um i've seen some really creative uses of that um floating pulpit um aquila yeah not the not keeping it how it was yeah i can't think yeah. i don't think i've seen that many of the original <laughs> no, no. But seen it someone, online today. someone else has done a really nice titanicus titan actually again using using those but it's it's using it across the front of it Oh, cool. um, so it sort of creates like a, a battlement or whatever around the top bits. Um, it's expensive conversion bits, but yeah, yeah. pretty cool. I, I really wanted to do like a, uh, oh God, Matt might be able to answer this. Way, way back when in the Golden Demon, someone created like an inquisitorial style um, sentinel. Uh, and like the cockpit was completely like custom. I'd love to use it for that. Make the cock front of the cockpit Mark out. Mark takes one from years ago. Like really long time. There was a guy stood on the floor next to it. Yeah, it's Mark, I think that's Mark Tay. Mm. Is it? Oh, Andy beat Matt to the games work to the to the Golden Demon knowledge. Matt, what is going on? <laughs> My brain. We should have a, we should it's been have a long a day. Fun. Give him a break. 
We should have a quiz. You'll win, but it'll be funny. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll be dead last. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it's cracking seeing uh, so many people in the chat. This is lovely stuff. Um, a few people returning as usual. Jody, nice to see you in there. Uh, yes, Andy is rocking a stash. We were just having a quick chat beforehand. It's a week or two out from getting him on that register. So mm-hmm. looking forward to see you on the next show. Um, who else said Jonathan Harm? Yeah, loads of regulars. This is yeah, this is fab. Now uh, it's a cracking pick. I've just noticed a war master as well, so it's even bigger um, than the new warlords. So have, have they had to buy two of those sister of battle things? <laughs> Looks yeah, like it. The it in, surely. Are there any photos of it from? Uh, no, I think it goes the whole way around. So I think they have oh, yeah. had to buy. I think yeah. they bought two. Don't the know, thing is, right, <laughs> if you're converting, you're already converting a hundred pounds. Now you can't yeah. see the back of the other like, wing. Stop worrying about it. You know. I think yeah, it's one. It's one kit. If this is your thing, just do it. Yeah. Like if that's if you got a, like a Titan Legion, that's pretty much your centerpiece, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. For now. Home. For now. Like, see, that's that's where get... his money for the arms went. He went on the Sister of Battle thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so you're not gonna have any weapons? Save, he's saving up for the guns. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Running and headbutt. <laughs> it's, uh, is there a Titanicus category in? Yeah. Golden Demon this year. Is there? Small scale. That's interesting. That is interesting. You're um, tempted, mate. No, fuck me. But um, there was one at the last Demon I went to, which may have been the last classic or maybe the penultimate classic uh, that we, we had before the break. Um, 20, yeah. And there was a there was a few like it, it's cool. I mean, I love Titanicus, so I'm, I'm I'm biased, but I was I was surprised it got its own category put it that way mm. well it's, it's kind mm. of a mix you can put like battlefleet gothic in it it's for aeronautica it's kind of all that oh stuff. Uh, yeah okay that's cool and all night i think all night yeah it was it was all it was all night yeah. so i think tarot, was tarot's yeah yeah tarot got our, our, our mate tarot who we'll mention later on in the show as well actually um but yeah there's tons of creativity and i mean when the thing's this flipping big it's there's plenty it's not, of stuff yeah. you could do it's not really small scale is it no, this this thing's nonsense well, yeah it's it's an imperial knight yeah, right yeah. I've it's made my thoughts, thoughts known <laughs> about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, very, very cool. Cool. Oh, Henry's gone. Oh, dear. Oh, he's back. There is he, he is. <laughs> is he? What's it's fine. We'll go on to, we'll go on to the next, next one. What, what, what's the next what's pick, next? Matt? It's Henry's pick. <laughs> ah, Brad Gamma. What is it? So I can speak about this one a little bit. So... Uh, the guy who did this, I've picked his stuff before, and um, he's got this entire Imperial Army that he's painted. And this, he's just done it as a, um, like a, um, not Inquisition, a like auditors, like an Imperial auditors have come in to, to and he's doing an auditor force. So he's got this guy, he's got a bunch of other people. It's great. Sick, mate. What's it? Yeah. Uh, what is it? What uh, is the mini from? Um, that's it's part Imperial Guard and it's part um, imp- no, what's it called? The AOS Empire. <coughs> Am I yeah. back, chaps? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. I've no idea what happened there. Very sorry about that. Um, this project's flipping amazing. Um, yeah, Richard, I could hear Rich telling you about it. Uh, yeah, he's, he's basically uh, no, I... the, the, the bureaucrats. Um, yeah, and he's converted this. Have I gone again? No, you're no, yeah. no, I'm still here. Right, yeah. Big, you know, it's a month long project. Just decided to start in January, I think. And he's, he's just built about 10, 15 of them all, all individual characters, all part of the, the, there they are, the sort of, I don't know what he's called in the procurator something or other. I love that geezer. Um, the old. But just <laughs> what a brilliant, like, just what a brilliant concept. Um, He's got, uh, Martin's just mentioned in the chat, uh, he won an Armies on Parade for his Stormcast last year. I'm, I don't recall what that one is, but he's got a beautifully painted um, Celestial Vindicators Stormcast, which he's done that that, that half of the Dominion box from, from last year or the year before. So um, he's just, just really, really nice. So well, well worth a follow. If you like Twitter for your, um, for your hobbies, he's a great one to follow. Just creative, great paint style, just... Yeah, so consistent as quick, well. Quick. Yeah, quick. But still so consistent. Like all of his armies look are all of exactly mm. the same standard. You could play with all of them together and his scenery as well. It's amazing. Mm. So yeah, that was my pick. The uh the, the HR department. Yeah. <laughs> Quality. 
I'm glad I got the explanation for that. <laughs> nice. So next. Cool. This was uh, my pick. I figured yeah. as we're doing backgrounds, go over background. So it's yeah, nice. a, a Sith Lord, uh, Star Wars-y type thing. But i um, mostly interested in the background, obviously, because it's pretty sweet. Um, there is a close-up <laughs> picture. Of it. Does it come like that? Uh, I think there possibly might be a bit of conversion on it. I didn't read too much into the description, but... Um, can have a look. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. The I'd like to get it started any one day. But it's like That's a, good colours, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice, nice sort of colours for it all. But yeah, that That's was my pick. That's very, very sort of 2019 colours there. I feel like a lot of music Even I listened to. 2016, a lot, a lot of music I listened to over that period, yeah. <laughs> What's that? that? It's got like a synth wave beam to it. Yeah, big time, right? Magenta's not in anymore. Is it not? Oh, oh. What are you going to do, Andy? Hey? What are you going to do? When, when was, I, only, I only paint drab now. I'm cool. I'm like, yeah, boring. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Mate, you need to paint some twigs purple. That'll be like hobby, whatever the word is, like zenith or whatever. <laughs> Combine your two, your two greatest loves. Twigs. Twigs and purple. Not into purple, mate. It's 2022, new year, new colour. <laughs> I just realised he's no, put no, on the uh, he's put on the base. Here lies the cold, dead remains of 2020. <laughs> Bleak. Not appropriate. Oh, <laughs> I do like the painting style on that base. I think it's really cool. Like, do you think they've painted the the base to look like the backdrop, as it were? Yeah, mm. yeah. You got to do it loose, right, so it ties mm. together. He has some really interesting like video tutorials on his account of how he does. He does a lot of background pieces, right. his sort of piece uh, videos of him going through how he does them and like how to get like perfect uh, like his planets, which is really cool. That's awesome. Definitely man. worth checking out. Nice no, pick. Well, I'm sure we'll probably mention some stuff, uh, some stuff like that uh, in the main section. Seeing what the chat's on about there. Le chat. Nobody expects the taxation inquisition. Yeah, I know, right? It's the flipping <laughs> auditors. Oh, don't talk. Um, <laughs> uh, Adam's asking, when are we going to see an army of test models on YouTube channel? Now, I don't know if that's as in when are we going to see Rich when are we on, see the, YouTube Rich on the YouTube channel? If that's a dig at mine and Andy's less than successful army projects over the last 18 months. <laughs> um, I think we should get Rich on the YouTube. But we're definitely, Rich is just saying off air, he's, he's booked in for his first kill team event. Um, so I think we'll certainly make sure we get some some footage from that, and maybe you can uh, get some nice images of, of some good uh, some good kill teams, and we can stick that up as an episode and have a chat around that for sure. Yeah, definitely. It could be a lot of a lot of fun. Um, that's a nice pick, that Matt. I hadn't I hadn't I hadn't come across that. But you say there's a ton of stuff on that uh, account. Mm -hmm. So nice one. All the accounts, uh, as usual, guys, will be in the description. Uh, for the video so you can go and check them out and give them a follow if you want to so uh we've got one more next pick. up we've got a few more picks oh cool wow more backdrops Who, uh, who's this who's this this is uh a i think he watched the podcast sometimes uh but yeah he is a brilliant account he's very very creative and he also collects yeah. loads of cool pieces um this is amazing yeah yeah, he's he's got not very many followers at the moment, and he's absolutely fantastic. So I really recommend following him. So you've got two Neko Galaxy miniatures combined together there. And I think he does a lot of stuff that's like not war, you know, like yeah. lots of like life dioramas. Um, nice. But yeah, really love his account. Super creative uh, guy. Uh, he's done loads of other cool stuff, but I picked something with a backdrop, and I thought this was a nice interpretation of a backdrop as well because it's not like a scene well it is you've got like the sky the Most floating the islands it. things which is making me excited for uh breath of the wild 2 and uh <laughs> it's <laughs> gonna be great like the um the spaceship out of uh district nine yeah yeah so and like also it, also laputa vibes as well it's got everything it's got shadows it's got a backdrop all the gym all the gimmicks it's right, also so 
quite original for miniatures painting, right? Like, I understand that art style exists, but that is... Like, I've not seen miniatures painted like that before. It's not quite cell shaded, right? But it's in that, that sort of... Is there of another one of his, Matt? We, we, we'll we do. There's another one. Uh, this one. Oh, yeah, that's, that's rad. Cool. Yeah. We were talking about using frames, weren't we? Um, that's got some strong Radagast vibes there. Mm. Yeah, really cool. Love his stuff. Always, like, every miniature is really different. Uh, really, yeah. like, as in different different in the miniature world and different for him you know it's, it's like he doesn't stick to a style yeah. uh, in the miniature world or even himself he, he just mixes it up and i love that in the hobby so just a very creative person yeah I think from before was that where he's just literally got a longer backdrop than the miniatures and he just stuck it to it so that bit comes out is that how that works yeah just a long old yeah just a that's big old really cool yeah, it's, it's really such a good idea because I've never seen anything like that. Because normally, obviously, it would stand to reason that your base is the start of your model, yeah. your backdrop works up from it, whereas that just goes. Yeah, yeah it's the base presentation. <laughs> Love the colours as well. Love everything about it. Reminds me of that ice lolly. What was it called? <laughs> it was fudge flavoured. It's all a load of weird, real, real desaturated colours like that backdrop, but all like yeah, it's giving, it's giving me a very like Ghost in the Shell. Slash arcane slash very sci fi sort of. Well, is arcane like that. that one that was on Netflix? The thing that's the video yeah. game. Yeah, I watched the first yeah. episode of that the other night. It's cool looking. Also, yeah, it's like Lehman Russ Hatch. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is that a, the back of a Lehman Russ yeah. stuck on it? Nice. Yeah, it is. I think so. <laughs> that's awesome. It's nice. I've got several of them and I've never bought a Lehman Russ. But in the bits box, they're sat there. So, you yeah, know, no idea what that's about. That'd be a funny episode. Just pick a random bits box and work out where <laughs> all the bits come from. <laughs> no, no way. There's some, yeah. People are loving that in the chat. Very fifties take on sci-fi. Yeah, it's, mm. it's just, it's just very, very different. It's really cool. I'd love, I'd love to see a game that was a bit more like that. Um, that could be really cool. Um, you said there was a few more picks, did you, Matt? There's just that one, and then there's the, uh, obviously, this one. Ah, nice. So this is uh, the LVO that happened, uh, Las Vegas Open that happened uh, recently, a week or so ago. Uh, Andy was over there uh, teaching some classes, which was awesome, but also got the chance, didn't you, mate, to go and look at the painting comp. Um, yep. And <laughs> funnily enough, there's a bunch of backdrops in the winners, um, including Flippin' Lion-O. Like, unreal, lion Seriously. It's unreal, that lion um, yes, yeah, so we'll very... uh, we'll make sure we find the accounts for these because we only just added these just before the show started. So we'll make sure we find the accounts for the three winners here uh, and stick those in as well. Because um, I'd love to have a look at the proper some proper photos of them, not just some candid ones. Um, this is actually the um, this is the judges' table. So this is judging the top three best of show. Right. So lining up the three pieces and deciding who is the best of show out of these three. And I thought, um, yeah, this was the top three. And two of them had backdrops. I thought, mm. talking about backdrops, and this is only a week ago. It's very interesting. And, um, and magenta, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was really cool uh, is the backdrop comes off. So it's magnetized. So for judging, you can just take oh, yeah. off and look at the back. Um, that line is immaculate. I Doesn't would... that defeat the whole point like, of having a backdrop so you, where you don't have to worry about painting half the miniature? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right? what's cool, right? Because he's, he's painted the back unbelievably well. And uh, it's just, it's immaculate, that miniature. He's taken so much care over every millimeter of it. Um, Where's it? Is it, um, is it an, an STL? Is it a company doing them? Is it a one-off? One -off. It's a one-off. I would buy the shit out of a bunch of Thundercats miniatures. It's uh, it's it's a seventy five mil. The sculpt's amazing. Um, Steve Garcia is the painter, but yeah, I can't uh, say higher words about about that miniature. I would. It's one of those miniatures I'd love to own. Mm. Like really love to own. Um, love Thundercats. Paint job's perfect. It's brilliant. That got best to show, by the way. Nice. 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 Good work. Yes, good, lots of Thundercats love in the chat there. Yeah. I was going to say, is that someone says in the, the middle one is Kahaz? Is that uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but yeah, that um, that 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 yeah. base is very um, 
uh, a calling card, isn't it? Can't pronounce her last name. Yeah. Right? It's hand carved out of wood, that base. So right. she, she carves it out of wood. Oh, that's clever. So to get the waves and stuff, that's really, yeah. that's really creative. Yeah. She did that brilliant um, Lord of... Was it a Lord of Change or Magnus? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there was some Zinchy thing she did. Oh, it was real. Like, it was one of those... It was the perfect piece for her style of, of that yeah. sort of energy coming up from the base and stuff. Um, and is that... An, did you call it an Oni? Is that what they're called? The, the, the little demon thing on the left? Mm -hmm. um, love that base. Like, yeah. Big jungle. Big fan. Freehand on that's amazing, so definitely um, nice. go check out photos of that close up because on his gauntlets it's got like really nice NMM and then amazing freehand through that, so uh, cool. really, really awesome. All three of those minis, yeah, good stuff. How was it as a painting comp in general? Because like the LVO is not pitched so much as a convention, is it compared to say something like Adepticon? Like LVO is a lot more gaming focused, right? Yeah, there's there's um. Uh, they call it journeyman, so it's like a, a more sort of um, standard category. So in in like Monty, they have standard and master, mm. uh, and they call it journeyman. So you have like that, and then there's the uh, other stuff. So you've got two levels, which is nice, so everyone can enter. Right. And uh, and this year, yeah, these these heavy hitters turned up, so that it sort of brought the standard up, uh, which was really nice. So there's normally some good pieces there. Uh, it's a it's a small show, but it's really nice. Uh, yeah, you get to see some amazing stuff. I mean, you know, these three are unbelievable. So, uh, just pretty cool that it's there. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well done for getting them snaps, mate. Um, right, is that it for picks of the week? I think that it is. Um, so no meme this week, but a nice <laughs> that logo. A nice second. But it's right. there were <laughs> there were many memes that were all possibly Eldar themed. That we that we decided against. Um, so who knows? Maybe for the Eldar show, we'll we'll chuck a few of them in. Um, I'm a little disappointed. A little disappointed. The Kez one is not in there, if I'm honest. But it's I'm okay. Gonna I'll get over it. I completely forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We're, you work hard, Matt. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. Main topic: backdrops to the future. Um, so as we've just seen then from the pictures Andy took from uh, the LVO uh, and some of the ones we had in the pics of the week. Backdrops seemed at least appear to be in vogue again um, when it comes to display painting miniatures. Um, so what we thought we'd do is have a look at the role they've played uh, traditionally because they've been around for donkeys um, and also the variety that you've got in them, whether it's a, a sort of a purpose built backdrop plinth or perhaps when you use uh, a building or a tree or something else to act like a backdrop. Uh, and we're sort of grill Andy a little bit onto why from painting decisions you might choose to do that sort of thing. Um, but we'll also talk to, to Matt and Andy particularly about just sort of what they've been seeing trend wise in painting competitions and perhaps what they're looking forward to seeing uh, over the next 12 months uh, in the upcoming comps. So let's fire straight into it. I've got no idea what order it's like. So, <laughs> OK, so this is from Monty a couple of years ago, right, Andy? Yeah, this is my picture, actually. Um, not that it matters, but yeah, I, I thought it'd be nice to have like a non, like this is how it looks in the show in real life. It's like sometimes you get, you know, Instagram pictures and it's pristine, amazing lighting, but this is literally on the shelf at Monty and you can see how bold it is. And me and Rich were here at this show and man, did that stand out. Did it stand out? Mm. It's just like, boom. Um, I remember when you sent the photos through from the show and it was so different, not just in the fact of it's a backdrop and yeah. all the rest of it, but just the the actual colours used, the subject, all of it was just, it, it was one of those, as, as someone who's quite casual when it comes to looking at miniatures outside of particularly sort of 28, 32 mil, you know, and, and manufacturers like that, it was another one of those, oh man, I really need to see what else is out there type yeah. thing, you know. I think at the time as well, at that at the show, there really wasn't a lot of other backdrops. Mm. So when he put that out on the shelf, it was kind of sat in the middle of this whole long table, just a great big orange strip. And everyone <laughs> just looked at it and was like, what is that? That's perfect for a competition mm. though, right? Like everyone was flipping around best it. Of, I think. I can't remember. There's a lot There's a lot of best ofs. Um, I don't know which best of it got. Um, but interestingly, I was looking for these photos from Monty and going back to 2015. 
And I did notice, like, my older album of Monty stuff, there were far fewer backdrops because I couldn't find any other examples to send to Matt. Um, so I definitely feel the last few years it's kind of, yeah, increased the amount of backdrops we're seeing. But that one, I think that one's five years old now. And I think that was definitely at the start of uh, more coming in, right? Hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it was, it was, that was one of the first ones that I'd ever seen, I think, in in the real in real person and, and i know they've been around for a long time but i'd never really been been sort of uh shown them before and i remember seeing that thinking god that's such a good idea it's so different and it creates such a different level of depth to to telling a story because that model itself i can't remember where the model's from but it's got like it's his sco yeah he's got a few <laughs> he's got like a like a space marine uh no space marine, uh, a games workshop uh Skitari rifle on there as well which just happens to be the perfect scale and all these different bits that he's put together and it's it's just such a really really thought out and really clever idea and executed so well mm -hmm. the coolest thing on that piece is that the sculpt gets softer as it goes further back so the hooves at the front are sculpted sharper than the hooves at the back oh, and, the paint, and the painting matches it so it's like getting bokeh on a photo um but because he sculpted it yeah he sculpted it rougher and it fades away into the background which is um, Unagi. very cool. But 2A two, is two a bit of a force. Um, me and Matt were saying he doesn't really social media, and I think that's kind of cool because he's a bit of a mystery. But uh, I remember he did the striking scorpion Ray Lord for Golden Demon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, who's this geezer? I need more information. Nothing. Nope. But he, just he just turns up to a show with like, boom, here's a camel. Like, <laughs> I is made it. Like it. Even like now, it's it's so hard to find good images of his stuff. Like I was, I was trying to find some more things of this, and everything's like a potato cam, little pixel box. <laughs> mm. You can normally find Tui at Monty walking around in like November, barefoot, uh, big yeah, no. beard down to here. <laughs> um, he's like a, he's like a, a Radagast slash mystic meg element in the in the in the miniatures painting world just appears that shows shit footless now we did discuss bringing him over for a workshop via cult of paint so mm. i'll uh, i'll have to reach out to her if you're watching let's get that done covid's gone yeah. <laughs> yeah. um but yeah i think the first thing i saw of a backdrop that really hit me was the um the the blue reaper with the orange backdrop i don't know if that's coming on the on the scroll app. Oh. that was in 20 that was in 2014 and that's the that's like one of my favorite pieces and there wasn't many backdrops then and i don't know for sure but i feel like those european shows like monte santavino scale model challenge were where not where they started but where you where you saw them more and because they weren't at any golden demons or or anything like that but it was you know if you want to go for those big prizes like those best of shows best of painting that was a thing that the real it's a point of difference in it right you've got a yeah yeah because you can liken right. it to like someone like rich gray who's who's freehand right is outrageous yeah um and that's his point of difference right mm -hmm. you do a cool backdrop then all of a sudden as you said rich mm -hmm. you know you you could see the camel from the other side of the room <laughs> um, yeah. landed that um nagash right i mean that's quite mm. an extreme uh version of a backdrop right and, and a piece in general right but again it's that if you've got to stand out from the crowd um you know how do, how do you do that you've got to back it up obviously with yeah with, with good painting do you, um you, just do know, you think just, you know peacock do you think with the the sort of backdrops obviously more people more manufacturers are now making them like Tara no. has a line. Or... That's the only one. Though. Yeah. Brought brought, uh, brought to the forefront by us. Yeah. Well, I was going to mention Tara. So, yeah, a little bit later on. So we, we, we may as well talk about it now. So we we uh, Taro. Oh, there it is. Makers, good good friend of ours, um, and uh, a sculptor, as cast for us and all the rest of it. And we wanted to create a couple of backdrop plints to release alongside our recent uh, fantasy uh, fifty four mil Kickstarter. Um, and Tara's now, since now, gone on to create, gosh, 10, maybe more backdrop plinths. Decent amount. 
Um, so if, if you're interested, again, we'll pop the link uh, in the description, but go and check them out and, and have a go. Uh, and actually, Andy covered painting his first backdrop uh, on a recent video series on the on the YouTube channel. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you're saying it's it's something that came across from uh, lar larger scale or whatever or, or, or that presentation. But Matt, you you were when we were looking through some like old golden demon stuff um it it was popular ages ago yeah. as well um and then it seems to have, yeah it's sort of uh, that was, 20 was odd kind of, years yeah. on it's come was, back in i was sort of thinking about it today like but it's kind of weird because like the people that sort of did backdrops in sort of golden demon were they're more sort of painter painters like mm. they're, they're more traditional painters so mm. they would do the backdrops i think that's creeping now into like everyone's a, like people are miniature painters yes but they probably struggle to tackle the maybe the concept mm. of painting on a flat surface with no no details to begin with but i think people are sort of transitioning more into trying that now and it's that's why it's that's becoming a bit more popular i honestly think it's thanks to it's basically instagram that's done that yeah and, uh, yeah, yeah. and other social media but i think that You've got people that aren't artists like myself who just like minis. And the more posts you get on social media, the more people have the guts to try it. And I think it, it grows and that's mm. what's mm. happened. And then you get people of all different levels trying it and doing different styles mm. interpretations. And it can just be simple. Um, you know, plain, even a plain colour looks fantastic. Well, and that's ex exactly what I was about to say. This, it's actually quite a broad thing, the backdrop, right? Because you, you can you can go photorealistic, you can go heavily sculpted. So so your recent one you did on the Woodsman, like there was obviously there was 2D painting on there, but you worked really hard to blend a scene into that backdrop, right? As opposed to, say, the camel is more or less just camel backdrop. Mm. Um, that great one from the top of the show with the the wonky cell shade style thing again that's a little bit you know that that was uh, i suppose a blend of the two right it wasn't it didn't try to be overly realistic the the colors in the background were as important on the backdrop as the actual detail that was on it right and i mean you could simplify it further in that it's it's the difference of when you see a photo taken on the white piece of paper and by taking on the black piece of paper right black burn work. they're still serving this a similar purpose right of how mm -hmm. to how to present your miniature or how to how to reinforce or or increase i guess the atmosphere that you want to get from the piece or, or, or the or the feeling the emotions you want to evoke from the piece right um mm -hmm. the on the slideshow i'm watching right now which is a slightly different time um to what you guys are seeing on the feed um 2a's other one is that amazing dead beastie on this like i i think i prefer this one even more i i do just as well. because it's it's quite haunting right it's 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 a real i've just never seen anything like that in miniatures it's sad painting, isn't it properly right? yeah sad. and and that you would not get that remotely if that was just a the beautifully painted model but just on a plinth mm. as is you just there wouldn't be any real i don't think there wouldn't be any any certainly anywhere near as much emotion in the piece because because it's, there's no setting to it, right? Yeah. Yeah, you could do it, but the the color adds to the tone of the mm. piece. Like it, because it's like grey, it brings you down. Like you know, with the rest of that, it's like quite bleak, isn't it? It's, mm. it's death. Um, if it wasn't there, it'd still be great because you'd still see the beast getting attention. Absolutely, it'd still be but, super cool. Honestly, but yeah, it would be a it would be a completely different piece, wouldn't it? Like yeah. it, it's it's um it is is exciting, but I I quite like the because as you're saying, Andy, like even someone like you, who's, you know, a, a very successful, um, accomplished miniatures painter, 2D artwork is a whole new medium, you know, to, to, to start from. And, and I think like a lot of things, unless, unless you're doing it on the regular, it can be quite, quite challenging, right? Mm. Um, to I mean, my, my friends that are 2D artists, you know, they, they work really hard every day just to draw 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 you know to, to, to get better and better at it so i can imagine you know if, if you're quite pleased with a paint job it's i guess it's like freehand right you're quite pleased with a paint job you think to yourself am i going to do freehand or am i just going to ruin it but you've got to take you've got to do it right there's there's 
you're never going to get better till you've done a few shit ones, right? Mm. <laughs> so you may as well just get on with it. Um, and I think exactly what you said, the just that exposure to it more via Instagram and whatnot, I think it helps take away a little bit of that unknown. Because mm. I think a lot of painters learn from, um, what's the word, imitation. Yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of fantastic miniatures painters out there who aren't particularly creative. Uh, or imaginative but are are technically very very strong uh, and disciplined and all the rest of it so now they can be doing backdrops as well because we can see it out there i mean you know how many times on a facebook feed or whatever you'll get one of those reels pop up of some some nonsense website you know buzz something or whatever that some do doing a a spray can version of the galaxy or something right with a load of ping pong balls and <laughs> set, setting fire to spray paint and all of that it's that kind of like street art right super quick street art and stuff and actually that's that's you know there's tons of videos how to do those types of things out there so actually starting off with a backdrop needn't be that intimidating right because there will be a ton of tutorials for relatively simple uh 2d artwork right uh forests uh, Bob Ross, right? Go and watch the Bob Ross. You want to do a little foresty background or, or something like that? Happy go, little accident. Yeah, go and watch a little, uh, uh, you know, episode of Bob Ross, and, and it'll give you a great, a great starting point. Um, that Athomi Alonso one has just popped up as I'm watching the slides going by. Mm, which one? The, the, the Blood the, Angel, uh, the the White Dwarf cover or whatever it is that the, the, yeah. they're going to That one I think is probably one that exposed a lot of. Mm-hmm. Warhammer fans to um, to backdrops. Mm. Well, here's a <coughs> I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here, but a, a question I had is the the Ultramarine with the Tyranid uh, didn't win a Golden Demon, uh, and it's fantastic. Um, and I don't know. I guess that I guess I've never really seen one win a recent Golden Demon, and. Uh, Anyone got any thoughts? You've never seen a backdrop winner. winner goal. The last no. one that I could find was it is in here somewhere. It's uh, that one. Steve Park. Yeah, that was the last one I could find that was the, the latest one. Saint Maybe. Celestine, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's similar to you know, we spoke about the other week how if you think historically back in the old days of Golden Demon, they very much stuck to their IP of it had to be super neat, no battle damage, all that kind of thing. And how that what's being classed as winning stuff like the troll that won the Slayer Sword, it's it's evolved the Golden Demon judging into just what's the best thing there. Maybe it's just that, but it's just a little bit further behind. So like five, six years ago, you wouldn't see that troll win the Slayer Sword, whereas now you do. So maybe in a couple of years' time, now that mm. backdrops are more prevalent they will mm. start itching away like god god love golden demon and, and all that but sometimes they are a bit you know adhere to the, the their this is our way of doing things which is yeah. fine but um maybe that's what it'll be maybe in a couple of years time we'll start the to see it coming thing, through a bit more. the thing i find with golden demon is that there's a lot of miniatures which have won where the backdrop is not like a purely painted backdrop it's yes like a exactly wall. right or yeah. like a yeah. piece of like a diorama or something, and technically that's yeah, that's like a, that is a backdrop. <coughs> I'm talking, so that was something I wanted to yeah, I yeah. wanted to come up to, and I think yeah. we've got a few slides, have we, Matt, of, of that type of thing? Yeah. We don't have to talk about it now, but but it's right. definitely something I wanted to discuss was this idea of what can serve as a backdrop. Um, but I think sticking sticking just for the meantime to the the two D stuff. Um, I mean, that one by Steve Party, I saw that a few years ago at Salute, I think. The one best to shout at Salute. Yeah, um, yeah that sounds right. Um, and it's, 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 a, it's such a good way to stand out, right? Yeah. And, but I feel like that one is less, that uh, shakes things up a little bit less than things like Athame's Ultramarine, right? Mm. Because it's, it's still... It's still recognisably a GW miniature, just presented in a in a different way, right? Yeah. yeah Whereas that Athami stuff is a that that's one of those great examples of his miniature painting art, right? Because it's it's taken past painting a plastic miniature, way past painting a, a, a plastic miniature, um, and and I guess yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it? Is, is it too progressive for its time? You know. 
Um, I think that um, as far as like what I was going to say is I think maybe the sort of person who's inclined to do a 2D backdrop, although is amazing, maybe isn't quite as technically focused. So when it comes down mm. to picking the top three for Golden Demon, they'll love the idea, but you know, you go up against someone like David Soper and it's perfect. And then you've got something really artsy. And I think they'll they'll choose that. And I don't think that's a, a negative thing. But I think at the moment, it's just coincidental that, yeah, the, the type of painter who's likely to do a 2D backdrop probably isn't as focused on the technical side of things. And I think the judging criteria is fairly technical. So I just think that's why I don't think there's like a, they don't like backdrops or... no. Thing. I think and that makes quite, sense, right? Yeah. When it's a yeah. first, second, third type competition exactly. as well, right? You have to have certain objective markers, right? Yeah. To to to, yeah. to go against. Um, it's still think, great we get to see it though. That's so, right. You know, and, yeah. and you do get the weird ones, right? Like Lands uh, Nagash, which I feel like it it did tread the line between the two, like what what it's, we're talking it's all about, miniature, right? Though, right? It's not paint. It's it's for me. It's super different to like the the two D painted backdrop because it's it's mm. Games Workshop miniatures because it was made of a zombie kit. It was like mm. a start collecting zombies on the top, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. So it's it's and then when you have a wall that you've built or you've used the kit like a scenery kit, it's so different to I've painted just a two D backdrop. Like I think they're it, very different. Isn't that? Are they technically vignettes? The the little like or is that just yeah. the way they interact with each other i was that's what i was going to say like when does if it becomes like if it's a when 2d it painted diorama? backdrop it's, it's yeah. like a single miniature does it become like a vignette or a diorama when it's a backdrop but it's terrain well it's yeah it's it's, it's a really tough call and uh, funnily yeah. enough i've been having just just random people have asked my opinion like what category do you think this is in but and that's the thing the, the, the rules are changing and, and squad's a good example because someone just said do you think this is i can get this in squad and it's like well you don't have to use a gaming base anymore well yeah you had it with your blood angels squad right mm. that was one of the first times where you didn't have to basically present them stood next to each other mm. all looking forwards on a, on their gaming bases right yeah yeah maybe that's how it would be with the how we'll see more um, backgrounds kind of integrate into Golden Demon. Maybe they'll they'll have to work out what category that'll fit in, and maybe with them we'll see more of them. I don't know. I think it's like who. I think it's going to be who does it because yeah, the, pe the people who are going to win Golden Demon are the people who are going to win. Um, it's kind of the same thing as when people think it's a conspiracy that the new minis win, and it's not. It's, it's, <laughs> it's the good. It's the the people who are going to win to pick that model it's not to do with the model right like get your tinfoil hats out yeah i mean you look at the, the when you had the three skinks win you look at the names and you're like well that's why it won not because the skinks knew because mm. it's yeah. it's camelson soper and uh comrade they will win every all the time um and i think yeah just you know one of those people that would win a golden demon anyway one day will do like a, a 2d backdrop piece and um it'll blow everyone's yeah. mind what is It'll, this magic? Who, who do you think? Who, who gone? If you got a fiver, who are you putting it on? Who'll do it? Yeah, because my for me, like, not talking about backdrops, but talking about upsetting the apple cart or, or bringing something that we haven't necessarily seen a lot in Golden Demon. I do feel like Rich Gray changed it up quite a lot, right? We we had seen the freehand and stuff from Kirill. Am I getting the name right? Yeah. Um, incredible, the knights and all, all the rest of it, but that wasn't always necessarily seen by people right um and i do feel like when rich particularly that um that night he did that blue night mm, he did the with the Z shield it was very very different right to, to things we'd seen before um and now it's less you know there's lots of people doing i think probably, the probably because was rich has taught them how to paint a skull but you know you're, you're seeing it a lot more right yeah but that Thanatar was, I think, more iconic because of the, the battle damage. I think right. like, that one, the Slayer Sword, obviously mm. the Blue Knight, uh, didn't even know it was that level. But that, that Thanatar one, yeah, the Slayer Sword, and it had so much battle damage and stuff on it. Rich called that one. Uh, 
but yeah you just see i think you do like what you're saying henry stuff comes in and mixes it up and hmm. and someone and will come can in you, can you see as you as someone who's very invested in the in the competitive painting scene and golden demon but not particularly but certainly it's one you care about a lot can you see people that you think are going to bring that through as you're saying if you're saying you think it's going to come from an established name is there someone you can see floating around and you can include yourself in that because obviously you had a successful go with the woodsman recently i I ain't doing it um i think i think that it's not not necessarily um what i meant was who's going to win it is going to win it i mean like not necessarily a known person but like say say land's piece with nagash was a 2d backdrop Mm that still would have won because the concept was amazing the painting was the level to win golden demon slayer sword and then it's do they choose to do it in that medium so yeah you got you got you know whoever is gonna go for it and win that trophy because they come up with an idea even maxime who won with the troll mm. if he just, if he just stuck a backdrop on that troll then it still would have won the slayer sword it would just mm. have something else as well um, I feel like with with GD in particular, though, if it is going to be backdrops that are successful in it, I suspect it will be more like your traditional two D artwork backdrops, right? I'd love to like see a, like a classic backdrop. But there's, I don't know if you've got the, the photo on there, Matt. Like I, I went through Matt's uh, Golden Demon Compendium um, Instagram account uh, earlier just just to look for some old ones, and there's one of my favorites is a there's a, a piece of bretonian jousting it's on right now right <laughs> oh is it great um and about i can't for whatever reason the slides are not working great for me so um uh, but like what go. that's a wonderfully creative um backdrop right yeah and that's from years ago like mm. first time round in the hobby and stuff um because mm. i was about to say i was like oh it'll be a traditional you know sort of almost blend into the background forests clouds some bullshit whatever you know that, that that'll be it. it won't it won't be necessarily particularly creative right mm. it will just be a nice um harmonious sort of complement to the piece as opposed to something like this where it's the book in the background or it's a, like the, the two a's camel like i i wonder if steve's celestine it's too uh it's even that's a bit too much in a sense for for a GD one. Like I don't know. I, I think it's it's GD is a really interesting competition in that sense. Um, what about the um? What about two A's like the Dead Beast? Obviously, it's got very small miniatures, but it does use a Games Workshop um, Mechanicus robot, and he sort of descaled it by putting a human in it to say it's huge. But you imagine if that Dead Beast was. Uh, yes, yeah, something from Games Workshop mm. and it's beautiful, had that backdrop. Like, some, you know, it, basically, I think the conclusion is there's no, it, it could win a Golden Demon. It's just got to be right. It's got to be Golden Demon level because it's not got to just yeah. be artistic. It's got to be the top standard that wins Golden Demon and throw in that artistic backdrop. Mm. And I personally think, I think that 2A piece, if it was like, yeah, if that had uh, Games Workshop figures on it, be there. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? How, like you said, I think it just needs to be the right thing. Someone's yeah. going to do it. And like you said, Henry, it probably will be somebody that leans a bit more into their more traditional art style. Like, you don't know, because because it's such an unknown within Golden Demon. Because a lot of, not a lot, some people that paint Golden Demon paint exclusively Games Workshop stuff. So it's mm. all very, almost exclusively Games Workshop stuff. So it's really hard to see, like, you know, how good is David Soper at, 2d painting and no like we know rich is very good at it so you know probably worth a fiver to think that he might do it one day and he'd probably be pretty good at it when he does <laughs> but it? also people like ben comments i think would be very good at it because yeah. he's already started to blend that in with games workshop stuff like the the space wolf i was just uh, gonna say that, that space wolf dreadnought yeah exactly Where it's got the, the physical trees but then the background yeah. like mountains and yeah. like hmm. night and stuff is so hmm. what's that then because that's got physical element and it's got 2D painted elements. Like which that's, it? that's the right balance, though, Rich. I think that 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 space wolf dread. That's the that's cool. Like that. That's the sort of thing I'd love to see. Like win, and it, and it definitely adds to the piece. Like in the diorama category, um, how cool would that be to see that sort of that sort of thing? Um, Very. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I do think it was interesting seeing that 
how much backdrops weren't weren't a new thing though like there's there's a lot of great old gw like gd stuff where it is a a real classic backdrop mm. um very different style though isn't it still completely yeah they, they were there but there's this more artsy wave that's coming mm. you know it's um it's very cool it's nice to see the you can really see the progression in a miniature painting absolutely by yeah. by things like these backdrops and when we come round to doing our it's miniature painting uh, art, <laughs> now i think the backdrop can really add to that and I, I showed some people actually like who aren't into miniatures like oh, what are you doing on your podcast tonight and i just showed them a few miniatures and they're like, what well, that's a that's a miniature i'm like yeah, yeah, it's proper stuff what we do. Yeah. <laughs> so, from from someone as saying, someone who's an established competitive sort of display painter, and you've just had a had your first go at or completed backdrop. What what was the driving factor for you? What was it a case of simply learning a new skill, or this, that, and the other? Was it making trying to stay current, like making sure you're sort of looking at trends and and seeing how you can bring your work into those or bring those trends into your work what what was the driving factor for you to have a go at, at that backdrop for that miniature how many jimmicks i can get into one piece that was a strong <laughs> one to be fair twigs <laughs> resin backdrop blood in water blood yeah. blood yeah yeah Moss. more like jimmick city <laughs> nice. shadows painted on shadows um yeah so we went in on the jimmicks is it something you want to do multiple times again? Or is it? would a piece determine it as opposed to you thinking about it before you started the piece? Have I frozen, by the way? Because yes. I have. In a very, very good in a very good time. <laughs> but we can hear you, so it's fine. Oh, that's all right. Um, that's very unfortunate. At least my moustache is great. Um, <laughs> I don't know when I'll do... Actually, I do have one backdrop piece built. Uh, it is for Golden Demon. I actually forgot when you asked a minute ago. <laughs> it, but yeah, I have got a backdrop piece. Uh, it's Games Workshop. It is for Golden Demon. Um, so I will get around to that one day. But I think it's just like, it does this add to my piece? And my idea for the Woodsman to have him in that setting, it, it needed it. Where there's other miniatures, it doesn't. So I think I, I personally wouldn't force it on a miniature. Um, but if it works, it works, right? Absolutely. Has that witch on the broom with the moon in the background, Plinth, has that come around yet? Yeah. Love yeah. That. That's fantastic. Yeah, um, very cool idea. And, and it's, I think it's just the simplicity, a bit like you were saying, Rich, about that one at the in the, at Andy's picks at the start, where it's not just confined within the space of the Plinth, Mm. And therefore, the base is the bottom of the, you know, or, or, you know, the base is where the top of the plinth bit comes, and all the rest of yeah. it. Just the simple fact that it's stuck in the middle of the back mm. of that uh, thing—it just has it's huge impact, yeah. right? I like I like the way that people have started to do that because it's 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 the truth, right? I'm doing a paint something with a backdrop, backdrop starts there, goes up, etc. Mm. But people are already and like I would always said they're not particularly a new thing because they've been around for ages, but they're not everybody does them. But I like the fact that even though not everyone does them, that people already start to think of, right, cool, how can I do this differently? Or like, it's a new way of presenting, isn't it? It opens yeah. up more possibilities for presentation. Uh, yeah, it's like, because you, you, your miniature doesn't need to be, like you said, attached to a big block of resin and then goes up the back and there's a bit there. Like I've already, just from thinking, like as we've been talking, I'm thinking, how cool would it be if there was a scene that you could create where it was quite simply floating in midair, where you attach it to the actual back, like the one that we saw, in a, in a similar sort of way but like have bits hanging off it i'm thinking of something in my head now but um it's, it's already thinking of like what what would work and and how can you look at it differently mm. yeah i've got some ideas that i'm desperate I've, to got, realize. I've got an idea to paint a backdrop what's wrong with me <laughs> I'm I'm not screen either. on on that then why don't we talk a little bit about this idea of of where does it go from being the plinth as it were the classic black back backdrop plinth which again check out tarot there's tons of them out there they're all wicked we, we better play around with a few of them i can't wait to see more of them um and and perhaps more of that vignette style uh presentation that we've seen over the years um in pieces the, the one that stands out to me a lot is mark's take on the paul bonner dinosaur 
perfect timing it's right there oh there we go there a bit of serendipity <laughs> finally um because again that's i get what you're saying right it's it's not a backdrop because it's sculpted and it's blah 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 but i think for me because it's because it's based on an illustration right it's because it's based on a 2d piece of artwork already it, it works it is a backdrop right it's not it's not a a crit. Oh, it's hard, really hard to describe. I really like it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And for me, I don't see that as being particularly different to something like what Andy's done with the Woodsman uh, or what uh, our family did with that Ultramarine even, where the, there's, whilst there is this great 2D uh, painting in the background, but he's done a ton of work on the actual base itself. Um, you know, why, why isn't that considered a backdrop? And it, is, it, yeah. is it a way... Is it a way of bridging that thing between the three D and the two D artwork? You know, I know there's plenty of people I know that don't overly enjoy uh, things like freehand on miniatures because they, they look at it and they go, "Well, that's a really wonderful piece of artwork. I get it, right? But it doesn't it doesn't gel with the the sculpture that that you're painting. Yeah, Even to the point of some decals, right? Some decals are are very graphic, and you know that that's their style. And other ones look like a a painting, and you put it on, and there can be a bit of a disconnect. Um, I, I think when you see it, I mean, how do you feel about that? I guess it's the 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 skill thing is like if I had a a door, and it had a it was a sculpted door, and it had a sculpted door handle, I'd be well in my comfort zone. If it's like cool, paint a door in two D with it. Mm. And do I be like, so it's <laughs> automatically totally different? But you and, need the door in the background, right? So your your imagination of the piece of how you're presenting the piece, right, is this minotaur in front of the door. Mm. So you need the door's got to be there. Mm -hmm. right? But it's your choice then, isn't it? Of how do you mm. how do you present it? Agree, yeah. agree, yeah, yeah. And there, and I think the core cool thing is the resurgence of backdrops has opened up. Uh, loads more options to present our miniatures and that's just super cool mm. um, and yeah that maybe there's been more of those like ones that are an actual part of the mini for for a while um, but maybe the thing that's uh, more people are daring to try is painting a, a 2d piece because certainly that's what was gnarly for me or scary for me and maybe that's it so um, but I think that in general the miniature painting world is becoming more and more creative so we are seeing more backdrops in general at the total number then the different styles different ways to present them mm. um, so that all this stuff is branching out and opening up um, and it'll all blur into one one day and <laughs> and we'll talk about it less and less you know? like this is a backdrop it'll just be uh, yeah. yeah what's think... the actual oh sorry Matt, go on. i was gonna say i think a lot of more miniature 3d miniature painters now are willing to take the the chance and put the effort in to paint a 2d backdrop like it's it's becoming more i, I don't want to say acceptable but more more interesting for people it is yeah, more, more commonplace, commonplace right yeah. but, but that's again it's surely it's like andy said surely it's instagram right it's yeah. Yeah. I, I think just exposed to it backdrops yeah. are massive in historical stuff like right they're they're, they're I've seen so many like sort of you know soldiers with backdrops and sort of but they I think that's coming across now into more of the sci-fi fantasy stuff, which is quite cool. Well, that's really interesting. Someone mentioned much earlier in the chat, um, and there's there's an interesting conversation going on in the chat. I think I think it's yeah, I think they're fine. <laughs> I think they're agreeing to disagree on there. Um, but there's a comment really early on in the chat about historicals. Um, I'd love to get a few people on. Um, because it's just not an area. Rich, Rich has an interest in in sort of World War Two stuff, um, yeah. but really we're not. It's not our area. So we'll 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 endeavour to get a few people on and talk about uh, that genre and, and and the painting in it. But I had no idea like backdrops was a big thing. In in what in what? No, save it. We'll save it for historicals episode. We'll do it. We'll, we'll do it in that episode. Um, what I wanted to ask Andy was what I, I tried to ask earlier. What's What's the decision with putting the backdrop in, whether it's 2D or, or sculpted, if, if we're agreeing to accept that there's a bit of a blur between those? Like, where is the, what is he adding to the piece over it just being on a plinth? Uh, I think, like, for me, I want, on, on mine, I wanted to 
sell the light source. So it was like I wanted sun rays on the mini on one side. And if you've got sun rays on the backdrop, you're, you're selling it. And um, I was thinking that on our family's piece where he's playing the guitar in the moonlight. And, you know, if you, you paint something good and you go, oh, that's in the moonlight. But obviously he's got the backdrop with the moon and it clarifies that. So it can it can add to your your story. Right. So I think, mm-hmm. um, yeah, if it just solidifies your ideas and really sells what you're trying to do and maybe when you've got like some imaginary light source but it, it makes it more obvious right um i guess that's like what i wanted for mine but it was also a bit like two a's i just wanted that colored backdrop because you think about from a photography standpoint mm. uh, you know it's like why people choose a black background because it adds to it it changes your your look and stuff like that and as soon as you're in control of that background like it's not a white piece of paper or a black piece of paper then you you can add more to it uh and we all know people are obsessed with um adding contrast and stuff (laughs) yeah i've got a green model so i have to have a purple base don't i um so yeah maybe it's the same with backgrounds and stuff like that I don't know. I just think it's another way to enhance your mini and your idea, isn't it? And you can sell your effect, especially if you're going for quite a wild uh, effect. Like with backdrops, you can always present it in the way that you want it to be presented. Mm. Like yeah. if, you, if you hold a single miniature up in a, in a, at an event or whatever, whatever's behind it is going to colour it in some way. Mm. Like, so if you hold it with a backdrop... True person's going to see it how you intend it to be seen which is quite cool yeah. i think yeah even plain black would work like i was tempted to put a mini in fact i did put one of our day guard minis uh layout on plain black because i thought mm. it looked better than a normal blimp i was like i'm just going to stick it on this on this black one because it added just a big block of black behind her it looked awesome so that was easy uh but yeah you get control you sell your effect but i think people are People are playing with more light effects, aren't they? Like things like moonlight and whatever, uh, mm-hmm. wood through the trees effect, um, like John Chan's done. And uh, yeah, so why not add the backdrop to that to really sell your effect as well? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's quite imaginative, that um, one Ruben's done there, isn't it, with the the, um, uh, the, the loot player or whatever it is. Oh, well, yeah. that, that different... Uh, Different shape in the shape. background. Mm. Yeah, well, the, the like, yeah, mm. surfboard shape. Like plectrum. plectrum. Yeah, that's shape it. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, that's very interesting. Are there any more slides, Matt, that you particularly wanted to go through um, for the uh, for the backdrops? Can have a look through. There's a few miniature ones which we were going to... Uh, obviously, like, there's the Victoria Lamb one, which was probably the first wall type osl piece that was that was uh, groundbreaking done. wasn't it yeah. that was absolutely groundbreaking but she so has explain. a piece of a backdrop in the background so through the windows done, done. is yeah so she's done both so it's, it is a backdrop <laughs> <laughs> yeah totally i was thinking the same thing so you got the 3d wall and then you got a bit of window with a yeah with a painted on thing and god that piece is old now isn't it early yeah. 2000s uh yeah something like that it's quite old yeah. it was first real attempt like big sort of competition winning with osl properly really i think yeah well in, in gold yeah, before Demon, everyone just used to spray it with with white paint yeah <laughs> that's interesting that's a lot i mean that's a very classic scene right that that's uh if we're talking about reinforcing like andy was saying they're reinforcing the scene and the lighting and stuff that's that's a very sort of sweet way of doing it right um then you can do your OSL on the wall as well right as well as the minis so mm. that's enhancing the whole feel mm. well, i guess the kind of i don't know the conclusion is it's an amazing way to uh yeah add things to your minis and it's super cool to see like how creative people are being and then and then the backdrop is another mm. way people being super super creative with it and it's fun to paint as well like i've been painting mine and just doing the like learning how to properly do clouds and a moon <laughs> with airbrushing it's like it's a totally right. different way of thinking mm. how to paint 
Yeah, you get a buzz off it, don't you? It's like when you do yeah anything new, like you first make your NMM look like NMM or anything. Like that. <laughs> so all these little injections of uh, of fun, and it's another cool thing to try, right? And you can do it once and never do it again. And uh, yeah, it's a really fun thing to do. It's interesting. It's not, it's a, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily do it for me in the sense, right? Like I think I I'm someone who prefers the sculpted uh, back piece. Mm as it were mm. but and that's no criticism of, of the pieces like they're brilliantly done it's just not my cup of tea the ones that excite me the backdrops that are getting me going are where it's suspended on the backdrop so even where, if it is a traditional painting like the moon behind the witch right that so using the backdrop almost as a means of of, of pres presentation right as opposed to just complementing the scene but particularly things like 2a's camel or yeah. um uh mine's gone blank the, the I, I forget the name of the artist the, the, the top of the show the piece you chose andy with the wonky the wonky one and stuff like that but, but even even ones that aren't necessarily and, and two a's i think two is one particular right because it's so bold mm -hmm. and it, it is i get it, it it is a desert in the sense right so we've got like it's suggestive of a desert and stuff but actually it's as much about the color isn't it than mm. anything else yeah um and i think that's what excites me about that that's probably how if i was to try and bring one in right it's that it's that creative use of them right so to bring a completely new uh can't think what the word is but it's, it's a completely new facet to your miniature you're yeah. not you're not necessarily complementing or expanding upon something that's already there it's 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 massive contrast but very deliberate and not just you know Look at my color wheel. This, this kind of thing. It's, it's a contrast of everything, right? It's a contrast of the, the, the impact it has. It's juxtaposition. I think that's the, the word I'm mm. trying to get towards. Um, I think could be really exciting. Like you know, we've all seen the Hobbit in front of his Hobbit hole, right, or whatever. But when we saw at the top of the show that artist you'd picked, who, who the Lucas Pina uh, old man wizard against that very, um, is it an impressionist style? Yeah. Of, of of trees and stuff I, I don't know the actual term but again that just complete juxtaposition there of, of, of styles and looks and it was incredibly impactful um mm -hmm. i think that for me is where where i find the concepts of the backdrops exciting um and i think steve party's sent celestine is is a really interesting middle middle ground between those because he has painted the clouds on but mm. it's pink it's this massive pink stripe right you my know. um my favorite miniature i think of all time is um martin gomez the uh the, the grim reaper in blue with the orange backdrop and that's 2014 um tried to buy that but i got snaked out so you keep saying you've often said to me that's your favorite mini of all yeah. all time I, I, I think i'm pretty sure it is if i could yeah. pick uh, I tried to, tried to spend a lot of money on buying it, but it got a bit too spicy on the price for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I kind of regret that now, even though I'd be broke. Uh, but yeah, that that piece was like the first. You'd have dropped it by now, mates. It's probably for the best. No, I put it in a nice case, so it was dust free, like my Gone Demon entries for the last two years. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that that piece that piece still is my favorite backdrop piece and probably my favorite piece and that's just some a blue man with some orange and it just yeah. it's amazing to look at it's brilliant the thing that i love about two of these pieces yeah it's a desert but i mean your brain does a lot of the work for you and in, in essence it's just an orange background mm -hmm. like it is a very very striking very bold orange background and yeah you get to the desert at the bottom but from there up your brain does the rest of it for you like when you see the background where it's sculpted in right it's a sculpted wall it's mm. a wall it's telling you exactly what it is do you think Whereas, that doesn't distract you though do you think because it's plain orange you actually even though it, it it stands out the orange but do you think yeah. you look at the face of the mini because that's where the detail is because that's what i kind of feel I see now when I look at it, it, it makes me think a bit more and it makes my brain do the work of, of like I have to think about the scene a little bit. Whereas I look at say for instance yeah. the Steve Party ones, like that's a guy stood against a wall, leaning against the wall. It's, it's, a floor. Floor. it's yeah, exciting, it's mate, isn't it? It's exciting. It's it's when when we did the design for Day of Guard, we spent a lot of time looking at the graphics and, and how to present it and stuff and, and we came um, in the end we settled on that that lovely gold swoosh, you know, down yeah. and stuff. And I love seeing that type of thing brought into miniatures painting. Like if, if I was 
into display painting, I think that's the direction I would choose to go with backdrops. I would want to try and present it, 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 it use that backdrop to present the model in a different way, not yeah. not as in add a backdrop to the model. If More that makes abstract. Sense. Yeah, exactly. There's, oh, who is it who's done? Was it Roman who did it? Someone did it with a, the fluorescence. They did they did some fluorescent dripping onto a black plinth. Roman, yeah. Is it Roman? Yeah. Again, that that's the type. Of, I, I bang on about him a lot, but that's you know, this is a massive inspiration. Like that that type of thing's exciting, right? To take yeah. nothing away from these lovely, you know, classic painting. Um, and again, I think Athami. I hope can, they continue with 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 those that style, right? Because it's just because it's a bit different or very different, right? Yeah, it's exciting to see. Um, yeah. I've just seen that that um, what's the Warhammer demon Bellacor? Just seen him pop up on the slideshow. That's a very interesting take, right? What were we going to say? Sorry, Rich. It's by um. Uh, so, no, I was by just. Oh ah, right. No, I was I was just saying. Um, for me, the, the difference in the, in the the backgrounds is I prefer the the simpler ones. So I've got nothing against ones that are delicately painted and really intricate and have loads of detail. But I don't know what it is about that simple striking element of a color that, like when I look at Tui's, all I think of is June, like that film, uh, and, and you know, uh, and those big blocks of color. I just I don't know why I prefer it when I'm allowed to come up with the rest of the story. If you know what I mean, like. It gives me a colour. I come up with the fact that it's a desert and I have to think about the setting a little bit more, whereas if it's got it really prescribed to me, I don't know why I just prefer it when it's a bit more open to interpretation. Like the one that we showed at the start of your pick where it's just floating in midair. Like I saw that and my brain went to two or three different TV shows, books, cartoons, whatever, and I automatically started thinking of a version of it that I wanted to do. And it, it, I think... You have to fill in, right? Leave, like... Yeah. I think also, like... It is what I just kind of thought was it still is a miniature, right? And when I look at two A's, that orange, the the person on the camel stands out the most because, like, if there was stuff painted in the orange, maybe I'd spend my time looking at yeah. that, which is fine. But it's bold, and it just almost gives this extreme out, like the silhouette of the figure mm. is extreme there. Yeah. Um. So it's yeah, it's all very cool. There's other pieces that- of painted trees, right? Yeah, and that softens it a bit. Whereas with the camel, it's it's oh. it looks like it's set in a desert where there is nothing for miles and miles and miles. And the fact that he's just in that big orange block, no clouds, no sun, no moon, nothing. And I it's think not that it high. adds to that. Yeah, I don't know why I love it. That's my favorite backdrop I think I've ever seen. And also the fact I've seen it in person as well. And I was stood looking at it, going, "What is this madness?" Yeah, we were early days as well in like miniatures, so that was like, I guess nowadays. The negative, maybe, and well, it's not really a negative, but we're saying like there's so much more on Instagram, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that maybe it's not as impactful. But then that was like, holy jeez. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't yeah. know. It's cool. I think, but then what Henry was saying, you know, there's all these different types of backdrop that'll come in, and uh, and then we can we can still be impressed. So. Oh, definitely. It's just about where it goes. I think. You've got to nail it as well, though, haven't you? If you're going to do it as a a realistic, quote-unquote, backdrop, you've got to do a good job on it, haven't you? I think that's the most I've pooped myself. Was you know, my yeah, backdrop. if you draw a crap cloud, it doesn't matter how good your model's painted, right? Still a crap cloud. Still a crap cloud, isn't it? Oh, nice. but, but I think I do think that's probably something to consider if you're going into it, is, is, is think very carefully about what you're gonna i think there's a reason you see a lot of people do those galaxy star ones right the star fields and and things like that yeah. because there are there are a lot of tutorials for how to to produce that quite simply with an aerosol of some type whether it's an airbrush or a or a, or, a, or a rattle can or whatever um yeah maybe don't go straight in with a a bustling city scene you know with perspective and all, all the rest of it but again how much would you love to see that right we yeah. don't you know, often see I, I don't have we seen any on this these slides where it's they've mucked around with perspective and stuff uh, oh yeah two A's dead you know Ruben's dead beast uh, necro neko thing has some buildings in the background with some right. perspective and Andrews has floating islands they're literally like cities in the background mm-hmm. a bit yeah so 
it's all there. There's huge amounts to play with, isn't there? It's, um, I really hope people stick at it. Um, and I hope it becomes much more commonplace. Yeah. Um, so you must let us know from the shows this year, guys. Like, just keep a maybe keep a little tab on what's going on with backdrops. Well, there'll be well, at least one. Decepticon. There'll be at there least one go. at the Decepticon with mine. <laughs> Bingo! There we are. Backdrop. Spoiler! Spoiler! What's the day count now, Matt? Forty-seven. Uh, forty-five 46? today. Forty-five. Don't tell me that. I haven't done any painting for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Pick it on. It's funny. I think I think we've all got timers on them. I've got thirty-one days till my kill team tournament, and I've got to paint seven yeah. operatives and three drones. Mate, I don't I've, know what day of the week that, it is right now. I have that many until them. I start commuting back to London, and that's when my <laughs> GDPs has to be done. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Right. Well, let's close that out then for now. That was okay. um. Yeah, I enjoyed that chat. So I think I, I really two things from that. We must get on some historical painters um to, to to talk about that kind of thing because none of us have a fucking clue um, <laughs> and enough of you have asked and sort of men- mentioned it I think, and you never know there's plenty of stuff to learn i mean that 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 crowd's been using oils to paint for forever right like acrylics is is this strange Literally strange forever. new wizardry and stuff like that I think yeah there's plenty it's plenty to be learned then. right yeah <laughs> um cool so let's move into the last part of the show so the paint cultists so we created a hashtag for the show hashtag paint cultists uh it's predominantly on instagram if you're looking to expose yourself to different styles of painting different model manufacturers that type of thing it's a really nice tag to follow um there's thousands and thousands of pieces on there now um and all i do is grab a couple that jumped out to me from the last few weeks and chuck them up to show the guys um and we'll just have a little natter about them no idea how this is going to work because as i say my slides are all over the shop uh, for watching this one, so you just have to describe it to me. Or I'll try and guess by your actions. It's a space marine. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is a space marine in this. It one, is a space marine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I've got it. So this one I wanted to to bring up, particularly like when I saw it first as a slide, I was like, oh, cool, that's that white dwarf chapter. It's quite striking, you know. It's a nice bright photo, all the rest of it. Um, but I read the description, and what I particularly liked was they they've converted it around and, and moved it around to look as much like the classic second edition oh yeah uh, space marine as possible um i thought that was brilliant i really yeah i really liked yeah, that well. idea i've got um, a hankering for old old minis at the moment oh, okay. so twitter today there was someone posted up that classic blood angels back a white dwarf army the rhino the dread and the one of each squad basically and, and many people l- largely sort of mid 30s white men were going on about the nostalgia of it um and it's it's true there's a lot of um yeah that's still that's the perfect it. army as far as they i'm that, concerned the ultramarine one from the third ed codex as well was on that thread right the, uh, the entire chapter <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, still on that strike force box must be, must be time to do another space marine episode soon right We've talked about artistic wankery for long enough now, right? Can we just get back to talking about Space Marines soon? Can we do a really clickbait title, like <laughs> Space Marines been ruined forever or something? There we go. And we'll what make, size, you've been painting Space, space Marines, Marines a lot, be? all the time, yeah. Yeah, and we'll do this in the thumbnail. <laughs> when Golden Dawn um, was yeah. Space Marines with this one trick. Love that yeah. idea of, uh, of rookie brushes there. Um, so, yeah. yeah, and nicely executed that Tomb Keepers scheme. Those uh, very so. big bolt guns. I don't know why it's only hitting me that they're very big gold bolt guns, but those but are these are these are the particularly chonky lads of the chonk marines, aren't they? Not yeah, heavy, they're, the, bolters, they're extra medium bolters. They're um, yeah, they're uh, fat boys. Bolter XL. Yeah, do look very cool. Uh, what's that next, man? Old school. Speaking of old school. Oh yeah, exactly. Oh, right. Speaking of old Tell me school, about right? Bottom, right? This is some old, uh, would it be Hero Quest? Yeah, Advanced Hero Quest. Just, yeah, just lots of joy in those photos right there. Some very nice painting. That just happy, happy miniatures painting right there. I bet every single minute of painting those was just fun. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Joyous. No stress, just, just fun. Just joyous. Um, so, yeah, should maybe be Can green you have bases, fun painting with these? But, you know. <laughs> is the mage giving the finger doesn't look like it right it does look like it yeah no, he's doing a spell matt get your mind out the gutter 
It's casting a spell. <laughs> what's, what's the twin tail comet thing as well, isn't it? That old Sigma one as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, painting can be joyful, right? It's not just about Instagram and self loathing. So, <laughs> what's up? We need, you need to call me after this and tell me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so this one, here you go. Two Space Marines, Rich. You're welcome. I mean, um, thank you. Thank you. This was a nice one of those. Uh, I think a lot of, of hobby groups, or they seem to have this year particularly, uh, have been doing these Secret Santa things where they've been painting models and sending yeah. each other. This one was one that somebody sent someone else. Um, the more I see this Hell Brett Mini, the more I appreciate it in the sense of I think it probably looks pretty pretty dumb on a gaming table, right? But no, what a great like painter's piece. Yeah. You know? Um, and and what? I I really like this painting style, like particularly the orc. Um, yeah, yeah the orcs amazing. It's, it's just the blood's really good, and the sword blade. Right. Also, mm. how mm. much better does he look in black? Black. Oh yeah, the co- the copper one is. Yeah, I don't want uh, to... maybe that's it. It's maybe too that's not gold so, yeah. help. But that's it was it was things made. like I was looking at it was like there's there's stuff that looks like so like the but the barrel on the melter looks that sort of heat burnishing tarnishing thing that looks very like how it would look if you'd done it over metallics right but actually the yeah. models nmm but then you've got things like the the glossy blood effect thing and it, I, it just i just looked at it and enjoyed it felt there was an awful lot of different styles on this one miniature um mm. but it looked good it still looked good it's the best one of these that i've seen mm, agreed yeah. um because oh, i I'm, I'm not a fan of this model it's just normal for the ones I'd seen before this, for me, there was just way too much shit going on. Mm. Um, but I really like this version. It's very cool. Mm. It's very cool. Like, I, 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 I hate the dead orc normally, but I actually quite like it. Then. <laughs> but yeah, lucky lucky mate, whoever got that in the post. Uh, I know, yeah. Post, That's, right. Right? That's a lot of work. work. <laughs> he, best a lot of got, work right? he, he best have got some good in return, not just like a like, <laughs> spray of washed Necron. Dry brush marine. <laughs> Um, what's up next, Matt? Oh, and this is it. You may as well all stop painting and hobbying now because this person's won the internet. So I read the description for this. This is uh Goblinado da Vinci's creation. Uh, it was a goblin that discovered the works of um Leonardo de Miragliano in the Warhammer Old World. Uh, and ate a load of mushrooms and created a load of war machines based on those drawings. And apparently this is one of three, I don't know, steam tanks or pump wagons or something um, <laughs> that they've done. But I thought you'd like this one particularly, Rich. So. Yeah, that's super, super cool. Also, I'm not being, I'm trying to say this without coming across like a dip. Um, don't worry about A lot that. of the times when people have kind of weird and wacky ideas, the ability level doesn't necessarily back up the idea like you've got this fantastic idea in your head and it's not realized to like the level that you would like it to be no disrespect to anybody we're all learning blah 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 but this is actually really really nicely done it is mate and what i particularly love is the skin on the two snotlings that's like peak mid Mm. to late 90s like top tier execution of that (laughs) style um, of snotling and I'd totally forgotten about it and now I desperately want to paint some some <laughs> goblins or something in that. Is, it, is that this color. thing huge? Like is it like Well they're they're snotlings. So they're I, I thought it was this big this they're minute. real little. So it's probably about as big as your oh, nose. I've completely got the scale off. Oh. Was, like, what did you think it was like a gargoyle? I thought it was like tight. A... No, I thought it was, no, tight. I thought it was that big. It's probably yeah. not much bigger than that, mate. Oh, right, because this I don't know, I'm, I'm finding the scale very hard to see. <laughs> I reckon the, the top of that looks like a half from a, a Kinder Egg. Oh, I fancy a Kinder Egg. <laughs> if you still even get that, I don't know, maybe you do. Um, but yeah, love this, love this an awful lot. Um, right. Just, I think it's faultless, right, in that it's a wicked idea and it's been executed, it couldn't be executed better. Imagine playing a game against that. You'd be oh, so happy. Just, you'd be laughing, rolling dice. Yeah. That'd be the best. Be a lovely Sunday afternoon. That. <laughs> but Joy, yeah, that's I will definitely cool. be spending quite a lot of time looking through this account um, yeah. after seeing this. Uh, I think there's a couple more, Matt, isn't there? Yeah, there's a few more. 
a few more. Uh, this was fun, partly because of the backdrop. I thought I'd drop it in there. Uh, I was reading the description of this and someone, went, I think they, they pulled a 20 hour shift to get it done for a competition or something like that. I was like, fair. We'll be doing that, won't we, Matt? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. Got Paint a lot on of the people plane. Can, can sympathize with that one, right? Um, but again, mil. that so again that crossover between 2D and 3D mm. backdrop and uh, and all that type of thing. Um, but yeah, it was more like the person chucked it up and was just like, haven't slept in like two days. I don't really know what's going on. Here's, here's this model <laughs> I painted for a competition. <laughs> Strong life choice. Yeah. Why do we do it to ourselves, right? Oh god, no. Oh, so, okay, it's a passage. Right passage. <laughs> uh, stupid. A, a couple more, Matt? Yeah, I think there's I think. one or two more. Ah, so Stabgrot, the eponymous hero of, of Age of Sigma three. Um it was tough to decide which this this person's taken a bunch of photos from all the way around this little scene, this little diorama. Um again, it's just it's just happy hobbying, right? Like, what's not to love Sweet about colour. squigs, yeah. mushrooms, loads of colour, a nice little resin pour. Nice. Um, That's the best squig colour I've ever seen. Just saying. That orange nice, right? into the pink. That's perfect. Not red. Do that you do you read it as that squig has disguised itself as a toadstool it's and is about to, to eat? Is he hiding the under rock? it or trying to beat it? Yeah. Something like that. I feel like the grot doesn't really know. I feel like that goblin's looking for the squig. I think it's a win. Yeah. It's, um, I need to. I need to do a teeny tiny diorama. Get on with it. But like just on a. I find. A, I find one of the plinths. I'll get one of the plinths out of the box and got to build a diorama just on like a small like plinth. Really and old. not not with it hanging two foot off either edge. <laughs> I mean, like yeah. completely no, contained. No, no right? rocks. Not not mounting a warlord titan on it or whatever, um, yeah. Tiptoeing, but yeah, very cool. But again, I hope I hope what these these are showing as well. Again, it's just that breadth of stuff that's um mm. that, that we've gone. I don't I don't think I've popped any busts or anything. And actually, busts seem to be super popular at the moment with um with painters, uh, sort of branching out from tabletop stuff. It seems like busts are their their way to go. I think we talked about that ages ago on a on a show. Um, is there one more, Matt? There is. Oh. so this again this was this idea of backdrops or setting pieces or whatever you want to call it um just a lovely opportunity to paint stuff and this i think was someone had just done a repaint over like an ornament type thing it was the uh, wetter workshop of official yeah. hobbit hole thing <laughs> that's, it, that's it that was exactly it when I um, saw that, all that came into my head was like, da -da 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 -da. yeah, right. Love the door, man. Love the faded blue paint on the door. Yeah. You should have a sign saying no admit, no admittance. Yeah, except on party, party. Yeah, big time. And look, little painted curtains in the window. Nice. Yeah, happy days. I am really looking forward to some Lord of the Rings stuff this year, big time. I'm not. Um, I look forward um, to the TV show. You like the oh, TV yeah. show? Yeah, exciting, right? Basically, yeah, nothing to do with Lord of the Rings except it's in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's one for the real nerds, right? Mm. Yeah. Ones that slogged their way through the fucking Silmarillion. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is for the people that we've yeah, earned this, right? We've put the yeah. time. <laughs> this is for the people that that knew about Lord of the Rings before Lord of the Rings was filmed. Yeah, you filthy Song of Ice and Fire casuals, go and watch your tits and dragons. This is this is about yeah. You've got to you've got to earn it. But before we alienate too many people. Uh, in the in the stream, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that's it. Is it the picks for the yeah picks for this one, Matt? So lovely. Yeah. So as I said, there's, there's thousands and thousands to go on and look at there, guys. There's hundreds of new ones all the time. Um, but I just pop through and pick out a few that jump out to me. Um, so thanks for joining me, chaps. I think that was. Uh, I didn't really know where that one was going to go, so I'm quite excited that it's um. I, I, I just, yeah. I really, I'm really excited to see more of that graphic style mm. um, with with the backdrops. Um, as, as, a, as a yeah. as always, I now want to go and paint a backdrop, but I'm not going to. Yeah, <laughs> got the towel yeah. to get through. <laughs> exactly, I got towel. The what? Yeah, my this week's dream steel catch up how <laughs> <Yeah>. today, <laughs> sisters tomorrow, space Marines on Saturday. <laughs> 
We'll, no, uh, he's, look, he's got Tao on the background today. Last week, it was <laughs> some other kill team. As we said earlier in the chat, we're definitely gonna gonna catch up with Rich on his kill team journey, which he's still on, right? So fair play. You called it of your projects for twenty two, twenty. What year is it? Twenty two. You called it for Thank that, you. um, yeah. and you're still okay. you're still sticking at it, mate. It's working for you. I'm loving it. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, you, you, you keep on going. I am literally changing what kill team I'm playing with every ten minutes. But... <laughs> And also find out, you know, I, I was saying about how it seems like this, it's a great way to scratch an itch. It's not. Yeah. It just means you get every itch that there it's is. It's very itchy. Yeah. It's worth you you're like, it's only a kill team. It's only a kill team. It's only a kill team. Yeah. And then you've got, <laughs> like, in I you play, like, play, like, once a week, I've got, like, seven kill teams. So I just don't know which ones to play with. And you realise if you painted all them things for the same army, you'd have army by now. Oh, mate. It's, uh, I'd have the biggest army if I could stick to anything. <laughs> But we will definitely be catching up with Rich on his on his meandering kill team journey uh, in in a few episodes time uh, when he's when, when's your when's your event? Uh, it is the uh, no March mid March March soon right so we definitely will be catching up on it. Uh, Matt, one day we we'll need to get back to your uh, Adepticon painting. Mush mush the count the countdown's on. Really uh, and if you want to see what Andy's up to, go and check out the Patreon. He's been sort of covering his road to Golden Demon project uh, on there, and it's shaping up to be pretty tasty um i'm looking forward to it certainly one of my favorite categories and one of my favorite sort of uh characters that are going to be in it um so thanks chat as well for joining us uh including that rather full-on discussion a few of you are having but i think i think that got resolved in the end uh michael don't <laughs> snap your off quick i don't just just because stuff's painted better doesn't doesn't matter um use it as inspiration uh, and yes, the squig is about to pounce and eat stab grot. I agree, Jonathan. So thanks very much for joining us, chat. If you're watching this back, uh, thanks for joining us as well. If you want to get in touch, talk about things for us to discuss on future episodes, we're on all the usual social media places. But uh, until the next show, which will hopefully be next week, uh, take care and we'll see you soon.